Hi there and welcome back to my channel for another video on the free energy equation. If you do find this video helpful, then please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to stay updated, and then share this video with other A-level chemistry students. In this video, we're going to take another look at the free energy equation, which is delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. If you need a quick recap of the terms that we are going to cover in this equation in more detail, then I recommend watching my other video in this series, which you can find by clicking the link on screen now via the little I at the top of the screen. Otherwise, I will assume that you are familiar with the understanding that a delta G value of less than or equal to zero deems a reaction feasible. In this video, we are going to explore the influence that the signs of delta H and delta S values have on the value of delta G, and we're also going to revisit how we can set delta G equal to zero and use a rearrangement of the free energy equation to calculate the temperature at which the feasibility of the reaction changes. So, the first combination of delta H and delta S that we are going to consider is an exothermic enthalpy change, that's a negative value for delta H, and a positive entropy change, that's a positive value for delta S. Also, don't forget that for all of these, temperature is in Kelvin, so we won't see any negative values of T. This combination of delta H and delta S shows that the disorder of the system is increasing and energy is being released to the surroundings. A reaction like this one is going to be feasible at any temperature as the value of delta G is always going to come out negative. A combustion reaction would be a familiar example of this type of combination of enthalpy change and entropy change. Moving on, the next combination of delta H and delta S to consider is an exothermic delta H, which is a negative enthalpy change and a negative value for delta S. I'd also like to take this opportunity to remind you that if you have calculated the delta S value in a previous part of the question using products minus reactants, it's very, very likely your delta S value is actually in joules per Kelvin per mole and in these kinds of calculations that we're going to see in a moment, you need to make sure that your value of delta S is in kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. Now for this combination of delta H and delta S, as the temperature increases, we notice that the T delta S term becomes more negative. Furthermore, at higher temperatures, we can see T delta S become more negative then the negative, our exothermic, delta H value for the enthalpy change. The role of temperature here seems to be more important, so I think a closer look at the calculation is necessary. If we set delta G equal to zero, and then rearrange our expression for the free energy equation as a subject of temperature, we can then see that temperature equals delta H over delta S. Don't forget here, our delta H is in kilojoules per mole, and our delta S is in kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. Now, this temperature value is the temperature at which the feasibility of the reaction changes. We didn't consider this for the previous combination of enthalpy change and entropy change because it was going to be feasible at any temperature. Here we don't have that circumstance. Due to the change in T delta S with increasing temperature, we could also get this temperature described as the maximum temperature for the reaction to remain feasible as taking the temperature above this value would cause for delta G to equal a value greater than zero.
Our third combination to look at is of an endothermic enthalpy change. This is a positive delta H and a negative delta S. This is quite an easy one to sum up for you. It's never feasible. Mathematically, your delta G value will always be positive at every temperature. This is because your T delta S term will give a negative value, and then we are trying to subtract this negative value from a positive delta H. So the value of delta G is always positive. Our final combination to review is that of an endothermic enthalpy change, that's a positive delta H, and a positive delta S. A reaction with this combination would become more feasible at higher temperatures as delta G gets more negative with increasing T. This is because the T delta S term gets more positive with increasing temperature, and once the delta H is less than the T delta S, then delta G will equal a value of less than zero. So once again here, we can therefore see that there must be a temperature at which the feasibility of the reaction changes. For this combination, we can set delta G in the free energy equation to zero and rearrange the equation once again as delta H over delta S equals T to calculate the temperature at which the feasibility of the reaction changes. Since the feasibility of this reaction increases with increasing temperature, we may hear this temperature referred to as the minimum temperature at which the reaction is feasible. So that's it for now on the free energy equation and if you found this video helpful I would really appreciate it if you could leave it a like so that YouTube doesn't forget that I exist. If you would like to know more about how the free energy equation relates to the straight line equation for a graph or perhaps a full review of what entropy is and how to calculate entropy changes for a reaction then click the links on screen now. Until next time, happy revising.